Hey crafty family, it's me. Um, today I am going to do a video, and it's actually a collaboration with my friend Secret. You know her, Secret Soda. Soda? What the hell? Secret Soda. Secret Soto. Um, her name is Sigrid, actually. I don't even know if I said that right. It's S-I-G-R-I-D, and I think her channel is now DIY with Secret Soto, Sigrid Soto. Um, anyway, the link will be below. Um, and I'll put the correct spelling like below you'll see in a text on the screen you'll see it um <laughs> but she is doing the same thing as i am we're kind of doing it together she's doing paper tassels the th she's doing paper tassels and fabric tassels and i'm doing paper tassels and um these little pinwheels uh, the reason I'm not doing the fabric tassels is because I don't really have the material to do the fabric tassels. She's got some better material um, because she uses like cut up dresses and stuff like that. I don't really have any of that. So instead I decided to do paper tassels and the pinwheels and she's going to do paper tassels and fabric tassels which is really cool. Wait till you see her fabric tassels. They're really pretty. So I'm going to put the link to her channel below so that you can watch that and go to her page and support her and check out her cool video she's got a lot of really good videos she puts out lots of videos um so let's get started with the paper tassel okay so this one was like my prototype when i was making them and there's things in here that i didn't like and things that i do like so i'm basically going to make it different than this but equally as cool let's just put it that way so the first thing you're gonna need is some paper and I have got this really cute piece of striped paper striped it's not actually striped it's striped um, and I think I use like what am I holding it up to that for I need a ruler not the paper I think the paper I used yeah two and a half inches so you're gonna take your paper cutter <clears throat> I'm just going to use this one to be quick. And you're going to cut, like I'm just using a six inch, six inch by two inch, two and a half inch, six inch by two and a half inch, I cannot speak today, piece of paper. It's paper. Um, I think I used a six inch piece on this one too. You can use longer, you can use shorter, you know, whatever you like however you fluffy you want your tassel i think some people do like eight inches other people do six inches i don't know you can do it however you want really i wouldn't go too much shorter than probably a good five inches um that's just my opinion um now what i like to do is whatever you see how i have it it's purple underneath it actually was white because the paper obviously on one side is printed if, and I mean, unless you're using double-sided paper or solid cardstock, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a color of ink, or you can spray it if you want to. So for me, I might take like, because it's got that little bit of the green in there. So what I might do is go like this and just kind of give it some color. And it doesn't have to be neat. It doesn't matter. It'll kind of look cool if it's not perfect. And then I'll just go like that and pick up the ink off of there. Like that. It doesn't have to be all the way to the top either because this is going to be, some of this is going to be the rolled, the part that's rolled up. So now I'm just going to wipe off the ink off of here. And take this and dry it. I have my glass piece out because I was cutting cycles. Okay, so whatever side you colored, you know, whichever section you colored, that's the side you're going to cut. And what you're going to do is you're going to take your scissors and you're going to cut um, leaving about a half inch at the top. You're going to cut strips all the way down. Okay like so and you're gonna go all the way down 
But what I have, which is really handy dandy, are these scissors, which I think these are Martha Stewart. Yeah, they are. They're Martha Stewart and they're fringing scissors. So these make my job a lot easier, especially considering I have arthritis. So I can use these and get a really nice fringy cut, which I really like these because it takes like half the time to cut all those fringes. So I don't have to like fast forward through it because it won't take as long. And then I'll just do this last one there. See? All done already. Okay. So I love these. You can find knockoff pairs at, uh, all over the place that aren't the Martha Stewart ones. But if you go on eBay, that's where I got mine. On eBay, they were like less than ten dollars i don't remember how much but they were less than ten dollars and they're worth it and i like the martha stewart because they're nice and sturdy they have cheaper ones out there that are for vegetables but they are for vegetables so i doubt they're going to be very good for cutting paper you know what i mean like these are meant like i don't know i'm just saying i think the ones that are for vegetables probably won't be as precise and nice for paper that's just my thought that's why i went with the martha stewart Okay, so now at this point, you're going to start rolling at the top here your little doohickey. And actually, before we get started, this is where I'm going to do things differently than I did before. So before I start doing it the same way and forget. Okay, so now at this point, you've got your, your fringy. And of course, you want this on the inside, even though we colored it. I mean, unless you want it on the outside. You're going to take an eye pin or a head pin of some sort, eye or head. Eye has the hole in it and the head pin's usually flat. Let's see. I want a nice long one, so which one's longer? Okay, I'm going to use this. This is a head pin that's got a ball on it instead of a, like the flat, but it doesn't matter. And then you're going to take a little bead. This is what I do, and it's a, it's kind of like what um, Lolly Palooza, how she does hers, and it kind of secures it in there. Except she glues hers. Um, I think she glues hers, but I'm not going to glue mine. I'm just, well, I'm going to glue the paper at the end and stuff, but I'm not going to worry about gluing this in because it it should hold just fine. Because what I'm going to do here is where the bead is i'm going to put it right where the fringe starts so i'm not putting it up here i mean you could put glue if you want to that's completely up to you i'm not putting it here i'm putting it down here where the fringe starts so that the the flat part here that's not fringed will wrap tight tighter up around here like so so the ball's going to show for a second, the ball, the, the bead, see how it's showing? But eventually this is going to wrap around it and you won't see it. But I can get a tighter roll on the thing, which will prevent it from pulling out. She glues it because she's like, oh, well, it could push in. And yes, it could, but we're going to put a loop and that's going to prevent it from pushing in because there's going to be a loop up here. So that's the only difference. But it's basically her concept, which I will link her video below as well. So I'm just going to roll this around the head pin with the, with the bead on it. Making sure that I pull on it every now and again to make sure it stays up. And eventually it will stay up on its own. Like I said, we're going to cut this once we put some beads on and put a little hook, which will prevent it from going slipping back down in. So that'll all be taken care of. For right now, you're just going to twist and twist and twist and twist and twist. Keep twisting. Do the twist. Come on, baby. Do the twist. Keep a twisting. A twisting and a twisting. And more twisting. <laughs> and more twisting. And also what that little bead does, look how it's fraying out already. And see, I like how this frayed out. I had to work at that. This is fraying out a little bit better because that bead is sitting in there. 
So I kind of like that whole bead fray thing. So I'm rolling, I'm rolling. And then at the end here, now you can't see the bead at all and the pin just fell out. All right, let's put it up in there. You gotta hold on to that pin. I didn't hold on to it. Hold on to it for a minute. It, it'll go right back up there. We're gonna fix it so it'll stay. But for right now, just hold on to it. And now you're gonna take a little bit of glue. And actually, if you want it to stay for the time being, bend it. You can unbend it, it's okay. So now I'm gonna take a little tacky glue or actually is my hot glue on? Let's see, because we could take a little bit of hot glue, like so. Wrap, wrap it around. Okay. And there you go. Now you have the start of your tassel. Okay. And you can see all the way up in there, there's the bead. So, okay. So now that we've got that, now we can decide how we're going to decorate it. Whereas on this one, I put like a little bit of trim and then I put a like be uh, a bead cap and then this, that, and the other, and then a bead and then another bead cap that had the hole in it. But for, for this one, since this one doesn't have the wire running through it and it became very messy and wonky, the glue is kind of showing. So that's why I don't like this one. This was a prototype. It's pretty from a distance but if you really look at it you'll see glue and and stuff like that so I love it but I wanted to make it better you know what I mean like I want it to be more sturdy I like look I just popped this off you see what I mean like the glue didn't hold so you definitely want to do something with a wire going through it so that you when you put your beads on they're sitting on the wire um so now I'm going to pick the beads out, but of course I forgot beads, didn't I? Well, I have these beads. Let me see if any of these will work. Yeah, maybe. We could probably use a couple of these. Mm. I have that one and this one. Now, let me shut the camera off real quick. I'm going to go grab a couple of beads that I like, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I grabbed everything I needed, and here's my paper bead. I just straightened the wire out and laid it down. Okay, so now what I want to do is I got this little trim, which I absolutely love this trim and wish I had more, and because I love tiny, like, as in width, I love tiny trims. And you never can have enough of those. I never do have enough of those. And I'm going to take some hot glue. For this, you can use hot glue. This is fine. And my wire is caught. Get over here. Let me move this out of the way. I've got all kinds of things going on on my desk. Because I've been trying to do all kinds of things. Craziness. Alright, so I'm going to take... A little bit now since this is about a half inch and this is probably a quarter inch wide I'm gonna do two rows of this I'm gonna do a row around the top you know what that's okay that can stay there it, I can fit it right back up in there I, I un I had it yeah bent so it wouldn't come out and then I unbent it to see what beads I wanted to use her um, but anyway it doesn't matter um, so anyway, I'm going to do two rows of this trim because it's, you know, a little wide. So I'm going to take a little bit of hot glue. I'm going to start it with some hot glue. Like so. And then I'm going to find the size I need. Cut that off and hot glue the end. Now I'm going to repeat the process right underneath of it so that it is nice and covered. Nice and covered. We need to cover the area 
My beads are rolling around. They're escaping. Okay. So there we go. So now we have some pink trim. You can use um, sari yarn or ribbon. You can use um, yeah, seam binding. Couldn't think of it. You can even just wrap some yarn around it and make it yarn or anything. You can use anything. Ribbon, whatever you have. Okay, I won't need that for a minute. Okay, so now that that's on there, I'm going to stick my ball back up through. I just need to find the center. It's very easy to do, so it's no big deal if it falls out. Easy to fix. Ready? One, two, three, fix. Okay, now I'm going to stick a bead cap. I'm trying to decide which one I want. I don't, do I want that one? I don't think I want that one particularly. I think I want this lower profiled one. It looks kind of like a little hat. And I'm just going to sit it right there. Maybe? I don't know. Let me try something else. I have these double sided. I don't think they're big enough. No. Hmm. Where are those things I was using last night? Let me see if I can find them. I had them out here. Here they are. I think I'm going to use one of these. I'm going to put these back. I'm going to use this little bronzy thing because I can press this around. It's like a little, I don't know what you call it. It's a bead cap type of thing. But it's got these four little prongs and you can bend it easily. Because I kind of want it to go over the top of the where the fabric is, the trim. And then I can push the... Whoops, we're losing our bead cap again. I gotta really hold on to that sucker or bend it again. Pick one. <laughs> Once I get it closed, it ain't gonna move, but for right now it's still open. That's good. Okay. So we're going to do like that. And then, see, so it looks like that. And now we're going to take our beads, whatever colors we want. I'm going to use this pretty blue color. And then I've got these little, you know what, I want a clear one. Hold on a second. I have blue, these little round kind of spacer beads, but I actually want a clear one. And I have some pretty clear ones here. So I'd rather use that. I have my little handy lunchbox full of crap that I use. Okay, and then we've got that. Pull it tight. And then I've got a green bead to go on top of that. Oh, look how pretty that looks. Look at that. Isn't that cute? My goodness. And now I might take another bead cap, and this one's well, it's not really bronze, but it'll do. It's more an antique copper. That's eh, kind of big. Let me see what else I got. Let's see what else I got. Oh, yeah. I like the mixed metal look. That's pretty. Isn't that pretty? That's perfect. I love that. Okay. So now we've got about an inch and a half, inch and a quarter left over. I don't even need that much of it, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to roll it up and I'm going to keep that on there. It'll ensure that it's going to be nice and tight and hold really well because we do need a big, um, a nice big loop on there. So what we're going to do is hold it, make sure it's pulled tight so that, you know, there's no room for play there. 
and then hold it at the very base of the top bead or whatever you have on top and then give it a fold over like that and I've taught you this before with making earrings or whatever and then we're gonna take it and put it in there like that at the tip and just start rolling like so and keep rolling 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 and roll and now let's see let me see if I can get it a little tighter okay. and now it's nice and secure it can't go in or out either way okay so now this one you see how it's kind of fluffed up well all I did for that is just take my hands and kind of used it as like you know when you do ribbon and you use the scissors just take your fingernail and just go like that and you could do that to all of them you could do a few at a time and then you could tame it back down a little bit so it's not going to be this puffy but I started off with it really puffy so that I can tame it down just a bit but I thought that was a really cute way to dress up the tassel was to do this because it makes it look really cute good idea no so once you do that you can leave it really fluffy actually I really like it fluffy like that that looks really cool doesn't it that's so cool so I like it like that. I'm going to actually leave it really fluffy. I like it. So that's my fluffy tassel. And, you know, I'll get something to put it on. Isn't that cute? Oh, it's so cute. So there's my two of them. This one I need to fix or throw away. <laughs> I don't know if I can fix it. Um, but this is much more secure. It's no glue. To hold it together the only glue was to put the trim on and i didn't even have to use glue so otherwise there's no glue so it's very secure it is not going to fall apart you could put it on the edge of your journals you know whatever so very cute idea right okay so that's that and you can play around with the design and do it however you want to do it so now we're going to do a pinwheel now these are super easy like this this couldn't get any easier and you could put them on sticks little like toothpick type of sticks you can take them and I actually put it on a stick and then put it on here you can glue it directly onto the wooden um, clothespin but then you'd have to press it every time you open and close the clothespin I'd rather put it on the wood then put it on the clothespin that to me was better to move my stuff out of the way so this way you press the stick and not the actual thing and crush it um you can flatten them out so that they're not puffy and actually crease these little corners or you can leave it like this with some dimension depends on what your project is if you're putting it inside of a journal i would say fold down the creases um but if you're putting it on top of your project or sticking out of something like a cupcake or whatever then you can puff it up now these don't spin there are ways to make spinning ones but and I have made spinning ones but I'm not going to go through that with you today we're just going to do the basic kind of just for decoration pinwheel they're very easy all you need is a square piece of paper so since I have some of this left I can make a matching pinwheel to go with my tassel which is a good idea it's a good idea so for the little ones like this uh, you use a two inch by two inch size piece of paper now you can make them as big as you want I think this is I have like bigger paper over here and this is I think let's see this is two and three quarters by two and three quarters and that'll give you like like this size or the two inch by two inch and it'll give you that size that I, that might even be one and a half yeah this is a two inch by two inch two inch by two inch one and a half by one and a half you see the difference so it depends on what you want to use it for I wouldn't go much small, smaller than one and a half 
because it was a little hard to it's a little bit harder to get the paper to fold in it's a little finicky I mean you could do it so maybe it's just me so I'm gonna do a two inch by two inch one that's what I'm gonna do so I'm gonna cut my paper two inch by two inch for a more small sized and all you have to do you don't have to measure if you really want to you can make a diagonal fold that way okay and then make a diagonal fold this way and then the folds you would cut on but you don't need to I swear to God you don't need to you just take your scissors it's easier to see on the white side and you cut in towards the center but don't go all the way into the very center on all four corners you just cut in so that you have these little triangles that are like attached at the top kind of that's all you do once you've done that and you have all these four triangles you flip it over to the pattern side up or if you're using double sided whichever one you want to show the most you put up okay and then here you can do it a couple of different ways you can use quick dry um, glue or you can use hot glue if you're really careful okay I'm gonna use the Aileen's quick dry and I'm going to make mine flat so I'm gonna actually fold it like down instead of leaving it puffy like this because you can leave it puffy and not fold it down and you'll get that dimension but I'm actually gonna fold it down like that that's the easiest way to do it because then you don't have to fuss too much take a little bit of glue put it on the corner start with one whichever one you want put it on the corner and Put it down into the center and just hold it there for a second then you're going to skip one so instead of doing this corner i'm going to do this corner so it's every other corner put a dab of glue in this in the corner put it towards the center and fold it down and it's much easier that way when you do it with the dimension it has tension on the glued part because it wants to flip back out because it's not folded down so you have to hold it a little longer if you want to do the ones where they're puffy or use hot glue um, but be very careful with the hot glue and make sure that you are have a gentle hand because if you use too much hot glue it's gonna be really messy so if you have a good glue hot glue gun like I do where you can do just teeny teeny bits that's your best bet okay so now we're gonna skip a corner I hope you guys can see now we're gonna skip this corner since we already did this one and we're gonna go to this corner and we're gonna put a drop of glue which I keep putting too much glue because this thing is like leaking and we're going to put it down towards the middle and fold it and that pretty much will grab it instantly then we skip this one and then we do this one and we fold and we push and that's what you get and then you could take whatever you want to embellish the center like I like to take these little jams they're so cute and now these I'll hot glue into the center and then we'll show you what to do with the stick that's what she said okay so there you go and you can leave it just like this you don't have to put it on a stick you could take this and glue it directly into your project or onto your project you don't need the little stick but if you want the little stick let's see I get back to my little toothpick drawer these are not toothpicks I think they're like craft sticks or something because they don't have a point on them but if, if they do have a point you can always take a good pair of scissors and cut the point off 
of both ends if there's a point on both ends sometimes i don't know if there is a point on both ends i don't know i use a sharpie to color the stick that's all i use this one was just a metallic sharpie and this one was a pink this pink sharpie and that's the easiest way or you can paint it or you can ink it you can do whatever you want you don't have to do like the the last inch of it at the top because that's not going to be seen so you can actually hold it and you're not going to have to worry about getting sharpie on your skin and you just go on all four sides and color Like so. Oops, I missed the spot. Missed the spot. This glue is like leaking. I need to put the cap on it. Oh, cry. Now all you do, lay that face down, take your hot glue, and carefully just put a little line of hot glue. Like so. And just glue it down. Like so. Like so, like so, like so. And look how cute. Very cute, right? Very easy, very cute. These projects are very cute and, and just unique ways to make some cute embellishments. Like this could go on the edge of a journal and this can go inside the journal. You know what I mean? Or on a card or I don't know. Whatever you want to put it on. There you go. You got like a little matching embellishment. Isn't that cute? Oh my goodness. So yeah, so go make sure you go visit Secrets because she does hers completely different and they're amazing. And yeah, so we're kind of like collabing sort of. We talked about it and we both wanted to do them. So, and I've been meaning to do them. I've had this one, which I just broke, sitting up here to my left for like months. It's been sitting there for months and months, but I was sick and busy so I didn't get to it. So finally you're getting a craft video out of me. Um, so I hope you guys make these and if you've made them, tell me what, you know, do you do them differently? What do you do different about them? So I hope you enjoyed this. So much fun. I'll have links in the description. Don't forget to check out the links. Um, and if you go to Secrets channel, tell her I said hi for me. Go over there and be like, Pink Poodle told me to come over here and check out your stuff. Um, <laughs> And I guess I'll talk to you guys later. Make sure you do what you love and love what you do and be nice to people. I love you. Bye. <laughs>